Dr. Neil T. Anderson is founder and president emeritus of Freedom in Christ Ministries. He was formerly chairman of the Practical Theology Department at Talbot School of Theology at Biola University in the United States. He's invested uh, 10 years there, 20 years in the pastorate. This is his 40th year of ministry. He earned five degrees from Talbot Pepperdine University and Arizona State University. And I'm downloading all of these credentials because I think they're an important foundation for where we're going in these three interviews, Dr. Anderson. And I will call you Neil and Dr. Anderson interchangeably, <laughs> and I, I know you're comfortable with both. Yes. Uh, let's just also say that you are the proud father of two, grandfather of? Four. Four. And a half, as we talk. <laughs> oh, <laughs> we're expecting it? our fifth. <laughs> Fantastic. Just a treat to have you with us. Thank you. Now, for those meeting you for the first time, uh, we're going to be going into the heavenlies a little bit, mm -hmm. uh, talking about spiritual realities. So I think it's important uh, to establish as much as we can about you. And, and one of the neatest ironies is that you were in the aerospace program before God redirected your career. What happened? Yeah, well, it's been a long journey, Myra. <laughs> I, mean, it's, I started out as a farm boy. You know, I was born on a farm that my grandfather settled from Norway. My dad was born there. I was born there, literally delivered by my great aunt, who was a midwife. I walked a mile to country school that my grandfather built. Actually, he was more of a carpenter than he was a farmer. And so kind of a neat physical heritage. Uh, Beautiful. Looking back, I got a little pin, says I didn't miss Sunday school for nine years and happened to be a Methodist church at that time. And so I grew up in the church. And this is grassroots and, America. Well, it's, it is. And it's a very innocent childhood. And one I'm very grateful for. I, you know, if we didn't uh, plant a crop in the spring, we didn't harvest in the fall. So cause and effect was built into my system. <laughs> And I uh, raised sheep, and you know, so where, I, I where, just where have a lot this? of good memories. What state? State of Minnesota, where all the Scandinavians went. <laughs> you look Scandinavian. I'm as Scandinavian as you can get. Wow. However, my wife insists I'm 125% Scotch Irish, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> which is a little bit of your heritage. It I'm is sure. indeed. And home now is Franklin, Tennessee. Franklin, Tennessee. I, I, I'm wondering where to start. Um, I, I want to start with a thank you. I quote you a lot. Mm -hmm. um, the seven steps to freedom in Christ, I'm sure many people watching have had their lives transformed by walking those steps with you. We will be talking about them too. I think fundamentally many Christians live as captives. It's a heartbreak, uh, it's a tragedy, and I know you have a passion to see that change. Yes, well I do. I said my, my journey has been fascinating because I, uh, I was raised on a farm, I thought I was going to be a farmer. And uh, they sold the family farm when I was a senior in high school. Well, no, what? Well, I didn't have much direction, so I went in the Navy. I was a senior rescue swimmer. I got into diving and then electronics. I uh, worked at Sonar. And uh, after that, I graduated uh, from Arizona State University with an electrical engineering degree. And I worked four years as an aerospace engineer. Meanwhile, my transition was my wife was raised Lutheran. She has switched to Catholicism. We got married. We, we became Episcopalians. And then we found the Lord. Wow. <laughs> It was through a lay institute for evangelism. And here I was, chairman of the, uh, of the board. Uh, they call it senior ward in an Episcopal church. And uh, I mean, life was good. I had uh, my first child. I pitched fast pitch softball. I bowled in two leagues. You know, kind of the all-American boy. Never smoked, never really drank. And, um, and I went out to attend this lay institute for evangelism, which I didn't know what it was. I mean, evangelism was not You didn't know what evangelism was? No, I really didn't. I mean, I mean, if I'd known, I probably wouldn't have gone. And uh, my thinking at that time was, if you don't knock on my door, I won't knock on yours. You can believe whatever you want to, you know, kind of a thing. And, and you know, even though I didn't really hear or understand the gospel until I was in my 20s, I am thankful for the, the moral upbringing that church had brought to me and the Bible stories that I'd heard over the years. Kind of kept you on the straight and narrow. Yeah, it really honestly did. I mean, four years in the Navy, you're exposed to an awful lot of junk. And all during that time, I was kind of like the Christian aboard the ship. Actually, I wasn't. It's sobering to look back and realize I had played church all of those years. Mm -hmm. And uh, then when I came to Christ, it was just like a world opened up for me. I mean, bookstores appeared out of nowhere. Periodicals you'd never heard of. <laughs> you, you know the whole Christian experience. I mean, it's, it's, it's an amazing thing. Something I, lives in every human yeah. Christless eyes I've never well, seen. Well, then I got transferred out of my beloved Minnesota, you know, my Scandinavian stronghold to uh, California, which you wouldn't think would be a good spiritual <laughs> move. Because I know what people think of Southern California. 
They think God rotated the whole world west one night and everything that was loose rolled to Southern California. <laughs> well, here's at least one nut that rolled back. But it was a good experience because it took me out of my comfort zone. And uh, I had a friend, actually I went to a, another Episcopal church. This one happened to be totally apostate. I mean, it was, mm -hmm. and it was obvious even to me as a young believer at the time. And no life there. No life. Well, the, the, the priest was an alcoholic and had an affair and nobody, that was okay. And it was just terrible. Well, anyway, um, uh, I had a friend who was a good Baptist, and he said, why don't you try our church? Oh, man, it was like a candy store from here. You know, I mean, you know, I was there Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. You know, it was all new, yeah. and it was just wonderful. And then, to my surprise, God called me out of that. And uh, I took about 42 kids down to Expo 72 back in 1973, and 90,000 people gathered in the Cotton Bowl, and Bill Bright issued an invitation on Thursday night to go into full-time ministry, and I stood up. I think I was the first guy on his feet. My wife said, what are you doing? I said, I don't know, stand up. <laughs> a month later, I resigned. And uh, I didn't, well, I wasn't running away from engineering, by the way. I was doing very, very well. In fact, my it's boss. It's quite prestigious to be in the aerospace program. Well, and we actually worked on the Apollo space program. I did some of the final testing on the guidance system for the lunar lander. So it, in those days, I mean, it was exciting stuff. Be a good salary too. I mean, I don't mean to be personal, but well, every time I've made a move, I've lost about ten thousand a year. So <laughs> I said, God, you keep transferring me. When I left to go to the pastor, that was ten thousand less. When I taught at Talbot School of Theology, I lost another ten thousand dollars a year. So I said, You transfer me one more time, and I'm going to have to pay to work. And uh, so it's been quite a journey. But the interesting part for me was was, I mean, you're looking at the classic Western mindset Christian. Western rationalism and naturalism. I was so left-brained at one time, my head tilted on one side. <laughs> you know, I thought there was a natural answer for everything, a natural explanation. And then when I came to Christ, I realized, well, that's not true. And so I heard all about the world and my struggle with the flesh. You don't have to convince me that our world's in trouble or that I'm struggling with my flesh. But they never told me about the world, the flesh, and the devil. Even at the seminary, good seminary to this day, uh, something was missing. I wasn't really prepared when I went into ministry. And, uh, you know, I fell in love with the kingdom of God and the king, of course, and, but nobody told me about the kingdom of darkness. I mean, it was just like it was, wasn't even part of my curriculum. And uh, so something I knew was missing. And I had some people in my church who had problems who I didn't feel I had adequate answers for.